Morning. We're looking at some Roland Hilda paintings, a compilation on YouTube. Uh, Smoothie uh, sent me the, the link to it. Um, he's one of my favourites, if not the favourite watercolour painter. Uh, and I, I, I learned to paint trees as, as I do from his from his paintings, his instruction books years ago. And what attracted me to them were the, were the balloon effects of these elms. And so I'll wet the paper all over, and then we'll see where we go. Okay, I'm using, uh, this is Fabriano 130 pounds, and here's my palette, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint grey, and burnt sienna, I'll just give it a bit of a clean. Um, it's a basic palette for typically UK landscape, but none of the bright colours of the Mediterranean. Uh, but you use what colours you, you want. I mean, there's, there's no particular way. They, ju they just seem to work for, for me. It's a palette that Ron Ranson put together years ago, and I've stayed with it ever since. I, and it's the same for, water, uh, for acrylic and oil, but I add different colours to that. <coughs> but you, you, you make up your own palette, whatever you're happy with. Right, I'm going to put a sky in, just a bit, 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 bit warm. Colour, this little background, and then... But Roland Hill didn't seem to paint a lot of wet in wet. He, he mostly let, let the washes dry, then he would go over with another wash. And he wasn't averse to using a tissue to, to blot out. But I'm not a great lover of that, so I'm going to use a bit of burnt umber and a bit of ultramarine for my for my clouds. A bit of dark. Good bit of atmosphere into the sky. Roland Hilda was a wonderful creator of atmosphere. And we'll put a bit of a, this is a sort of wintry scene. Let's put a bit of sienna in. Burnt sienna, that is. Well, I'm going to give that a dry. So take your headphones off. Do the balloons of the uh, the shape of the, the canopy of the trees. It's not so easy to do on Fabriano. There aren't too many high spots like the arches paper. But keeping things simple, let's uh, put a bit of springy sort of greens in here. And 
going to put in some background. It takes a bit of practice to to do all this. I'm going to put some in here just to give a bit of distance behind. Behind the main feature, just the backdrop, so then we'll come in with a bit That's working there, that's a bit better. And then we'll put in a bit of a foreground, just rough. Put in some nice burnt umber, burnt sienna, bit of blue, bit of lemon yellow, all on the same brush at the same time. A bit, bit of green in there. So it's all dry brushed here. A lot of uh, sparkle. Then we'll go over the other side and do something similar. in the foreground, got a nice that red of the uh, burnt sienna, mixes great with uh, with uh, Payne's Grey, but don't overpaint too much, otherwise you'll end up with uh, mud. Okay, so we'll give that a bit of a, a dry, then we can put in some branches, trunks. Just a little straight of the nail, just add a little bit of detail. Now I want to put some more solid I call it stuff. Okay, we can thicken up here. Okay, let's put in a bit of the background with the blues and a bit of burnt umber. This brush is it seems to be behaving better than it was. I bought I just bought two Two more of these hakes, two inch hakes from Curtis Ward. They don't all behave perfectly well. They're not all gentlemanly. They do split some of them, but if you get a good one, put that blue in behind there.
Hi, for this. Oh, sorry. Chuck my camera. I'll use a bit of thicker paint and, and the rigger. Just to create the impression that there's a lot going on when in fact just a few strokes of the brush. But I hold the brush at the tip and then we want to do some, some down here. So we won't Just put a few breaks in in that foliage. Probably a bit too much water on the brush here, but. But I'm trying to paint quickly. I quite like the umber and uh, I can't remember what I was going to say then. Just I'm not going to do too much of this. Otherwise we'll uh, be here all day. Oh, you can really lose yourself in these canopies, but we don't really want to make rods for backs. We're trying to give a, a simple impression of of a, a like a fleeting moment in a Kent Lane. Just something similar down down here with. But have a look at, uh, if I remember, I'll put the link, the YouTube link on, on this video. Because it is so, his drawing of uh, villages, towns, his impressionist watercolours of simple country lanes. As things used to be. Just some stuff. Put in a bit of uh, we'll put in a bit of a bit of that. A little bit of reflection there, but that's all I'm going to do. I'll put a couple of birds in, I think. Uh, 
Give it a signature, I'm going to put, a, put the uh, ivory mount on it. I could only do simple watercolours, I can't do great uh, Roland Hilda type paintings. I can just be inspired by him and do my own thing. Uh, so, this on. So there's another simple watercolour, but I think uh, less is more. Uh, I'll just tilt the board a bit, bit more so we can get a more square on view. Sorry about the uh, YouTube will ask me to uh, improve this video. Right, but that's, that's more or less. So let's go into it. See the background, very simple. You could put a ghost of a building in there. That's, that should be a bit more of a break there. Uh, so there we are, just a simple country lane after a storm. Uh, we had a terrific storm here yesterday in London. My bit of it anyway. So it's gone viral in Wallington. Look up Wallington, W A W L I N G T O N. Uh, they've got a bridge, the railway bridge goes under a big dip in the in the main road, and three cars got got into difficulties there. One stupidly thought he could go through it, but he ended up in four foot of water. And it's quite hilarious really. So uh, have a look. So plenty of water about, so plenty of water in my, my picture here. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.